Unfortunately, modern 911 motors are getting packed in tighter and tighter. To remove the residence tube on the 991 Gen 1, you will first need to remove the engine cooling fans, tail lights, rear bumper cover, airbox, and throttle body. I also like to remove the oil intake tube, indicated by the red arrow, just to give me some more room. For assistance with all of these tasks, please follow the link provided at the end of this video. Depending on the model you have, you will also need to release the rear sway bar so you can lower the engine enough to get clearance needed between the top of the engine and the chassis. Again, please follow the link provided at the end of this video for assistance with that task. Squeeze in the connection for the purge tube and separate it from the resonance tube housing. Red arrow. Use a pick and pull out on the red tab, red arrow, and then push down on the black tab and separate the electrical connection for the absolute pressure sensor. Remove the EVC purge valve and reach in towards the back of the 1 and 3 intake runner. Use an E12 torque and remove the single screw holding the bracket to the top rear of the intake runner. This will make removing and installing the band clamps much easier. Please follow the link provided at the end of this video if you need additional assistance with removing the purge valve. Squeeze in on the connections for the PCV tubes and separate them from the resonance tubes, red arrows. Use care as these get brittle over time. Use a T30 torque and remove the single screw on each band, red arrow. Always replace these screws. Remove the bands. They are each consisting of two pieces, upper and lower. These bands can get really stuck on there. Use a pick to help separate them. Free the bands up completely from the tube. This image shows the bands connected at the rear. The top one will slip out from the lower. Use a trim removal tool and separate the gasket from the intake runners. Push the gasket completely onto the resonance tube, red arrow. These gaskets get a lot of heat sink and dry out and crack. If you are planning on doing this, I recommend always replacing the gaskets and ordering them ahead of time. Ours were so cracked and split that it was easier just to cut them off. This image shows the air gap between the resonance tube and the intake runners that the gasket seals, indicated by the red arrows. You can now remove the resonance tube from the engine. If you have an S, you will need to disconnect the vacuum line from the valve at the rear of the tuning flap, red arrow. Note, our project car was not an S. We are demonstrating on a 3.8 resonance tube from a 997 Gen 2. Yours may vary. You're going to have to do this mainly by feel. With the tube out of the vehicle, you can see the components. Separate the wiring connection by squeezing in on the tube and pulling it off the valve, blue arrow. You will need to disconnect the vacuum line from the valve. The line from the valve to the tuning flap can stay. I could not get the line to separate and ended up cutting it as close to the valve as possible, indicated by the red arrow. The valve separates from the tube by lifting up on the retaining tab, red arrow, and slide it off the mount. To replace the actuator, remove the two screws with a T25 torque. Installation is the reverse of removal. Spray a very light coat of silicone on the vacuum line when attaching it to the valve. Clean the resonance tube and intake manifolds as best you can with a lint-free cloth. Lightly spray both rubber sleeves with silicone spray and then when installing them you should be able to pull them completely around 360 degrees the resonance tube once installed. The stop bead must be seated between the tube and the intakes. Always replace the self-locking screws and torque them to 4.5 newton meters or 3.5 foot pounds. Thanks for watching. Be sure to subscribe to our channel and check out another video in this series.